What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Angway L20 2.0. This is obviously a foldable lightweight e-bike from Angway. Very lightweight, very maneuverable. And this thing has one trick up its sleeve that not a lot of other e-bikes have, which is a 52 volt system. And I think throughout today's video, you're going to be really surprised to see just how powerful this lightweight budget oriented e-bike actually is. And if you guys do want to check out this bike, there is a link in the description below. Any coupon codes or special discounts that are listed will be there as well. For the price, this is a very feature rich e-bike and it has a lot of things that the competition does not have. So while riding this e-bike, I was actually shocked to see that for the price, this thing is actually a very good hill climber and it's a little torque monster. I was genuinely surprised to discover just how much power this thing actually has. And as you guys can see, it features a suspension seat post, a front rack and a very nice low step through design that makes it easy to get on and off this bike. So what we'll do today is take a look at all the components and specs and features of this e-bike and then we're going to take it out on the road and see just how it performs. Let's jump right in. All right guys, today we're going to be looking at the Angway L20 2.0. We're going to check out the specs and components of this bike. Let's go ahead and start up at the top. Starting up at the top, you've got rubberized ergonomic grips. Control panel right here. And this control panel has the plus button, minus button, the power button, and then a couple other buttons over here, a headlight button, and this is a button for your settings. We're gonna go into that later. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Hold the power button and you get nothing. And that's because we need to put the key into the battery right here to turn the bike on. So guys, you throw the key in there and then you push the key in. That puts the battery in the unlocked position and then you just turn it once more. The battery is relocked, but now you can turn the bike on. So we'll hold down the power button and there she is, we're on. We'll go through the settings in a bit. This looks like you get a built-in bell, nice sounding bell, not too loud, on the handlebar brake lever and these are mechanical disc brakes. And look at this, guys. We have some nice textured brake levers. These do feel nice on the hands. And on this side, you get the half twist throttle and the shifter. And it didn't even take off the clear protective tape. Look at that. Nice and shiny. Seven speed Shimano shifter. Moving on down, you do get an adjustment for the height for the handlebar stem. Here's the latch for the foldable stem. Working our way down, you do get some good cable management. And what's cool is that the front rack has this little hook that keeps the cables tidy and pushed away, not in the way of your storage on this included front rack. And what's interesting is that the headlight is actually mounted on the rack. So you might be turning in one direction and the headlight is still aimed in the direction that you were previously going. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay of where your light is aimed until you straighten out your wheel and go straight. Basic suspension forks with a lockout and, pre and preload adjustment. You get metal fenders in this bike, 20 inch by three inch knobby tires. Looks like we can inflate these all the way up to 45 PSI for less rolling resistance. We get some Angway branded suspension forks and there are the 180 millimeter disc brake rotors with the mechanical disc brake caliper. The color that this bike comes with is a very interesting color. It's almost like a dark, dark, dark blue color. Even though it's advertised online as black, it's got this nice blue tint to it. So if you're into that kind of color scheme, you're gonna like how this bike looks. See that, it's got this like blue tint to it. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I'm gonna do some video editing magic to make sure you guys can see. So this battery right here, this is actually black and this has this blue tint to it. At the bottom, we've got a stand for when the bike is folded up. Controller is in here. We're gonna take a look at this in a second. And here we have some foldable pedals. You just press down in the middle right here. Pedals fold in, pull it out, and you're ready to roll. Here's the 
Engelway branded battery. And this key does have to stay in when you're operating the bike. And here's some numbers over here. Here's the 13 amp hour capacity, where it says 52 volts. L20, explore a new way. And here we have another 180 millimeter disc brake rotor with of course another mechanical disc brake caliper. Rear rack that's rated for 25 kilograms. And there are some numbers on the rear motor in case you guys are interested. Moving on back, we've got that seven speed transmission, nice derailleur guard, and a basic Shimano Tourney derailleur. Decently sized front chain ring, pretty good for the speed that this bike is gonna go. I like that you get two guards on each side. It looks better and the chain is gonna stay on. And here's an interesting place where you can mount your water bottle or maybe a mount for a second battery. See what we got. All right, so our controller looks like we've got 22 amps. About a medium width seat for this bike. Decently squishy. I do like the white stitching. That is a nice design touch. And this bike does come with a suspension seat post. This is a budget suspension seat post. It does feel kind of clunky, but it works. This also does add a lot of seat height to the bike. So if you are a shorter rider, believe it or not, this bike is not going to be good for you. And you guys are gonna see why in a second. To remove the battery, you press down the latch underneath the seat. The seat will fold up. And then right now, the battery is locked in. What I can do is push in. See how it goes in and then I can turn it. Now the battery is unlocked and I can slide it right in. And then from there, obviously, you can push it back down, lock it in place. And now it's locked, now it's not gonna go anywhere. And then from there, you can turn the bike back on, put your seat back on and you're ready to ride. And the charger that we get for this battery is a two amp charger. All right guys, so check this out. I am an average sized male, I'm 5'10". And this is how tall the seat is. It is pretty much at my hips right now. Getting on this bike, this is a pretty tall bike, guys. The suspension seat post does compress a little bit, but not a whole lot. There is some travel in there. I do feel it. It is a little bit clunky, but it does work. And my toes can comfortably touch the ground at 5'10". So if you're shorter than maybe like, I don't know, 5'6", 5'7", this might not be the best bike for you unless you change out the seat post and you remove that suspension seat post. Front shock travel, they do work. Next up, I'll show you guys how to fold this bike up. So there's a little button right here. You push forwards on the center latch and you can unlock the bike. And from there, what I like to do is turn the wheel towards me, push in the middle, hold the rear rack, hold the handlebars. And then I'm gonna step in here and push with my leg set it down in the middle, and then you can easily close this up just like so. And this is fairly compact, especially if I fold down the handlebar stem as well. This is a pretty small bike. Putting it back together, you go ahead and obviously reverse that in, slap that in place, open the bike up just a little bit. Again, I like to turn the wheel away from me now when I put the bike back in, and then it'll roll right into place. Push the center closed, latch that in, and you are good to go. And this bike isn't all that heavy. It weighed in for me at about 70 pounds. So it's not the heaviest bike, but it is on a lighter bike for e-bikes. Picking it up isn't all that bad. So if you have to load this in your car, it's not gonna be too bad. And most of the weight is gonna be on the rear. So the front is very light because you don't have a battery in here. All the heavy stuff is in the back. All right, guys, let me go ahead and show you how to unlock the top speed of this bike. So what you're gonna go ahead and do is obviously turn the bike on, and then we're gonna hold the plus and minus buttons to get into the advanced settings. Okay, and now you're gonna hold this little top button right here and the minus buttons, hold that together. Now where it says 220, that is the wheel size. We'll go ahead and press this top button once, and then one more time. And now you're in the L5 menu. See where it says 99? I brought it all the way up. Before it was a little bit lower. You can adjust it with the plus and minus buttons. So we bring it all the way up to 99. Bring it all the way up to 99. Press the top button again. 
And what you're going to go ahead and do is hold this top button again. And then we go back to our main menu right over here. But watch this, guys. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to pedal assist 5 and throttle. And it still brings me only up to 20 miles an hour. So I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if that speed unlock does anything. If I'm doing something wrong and you guys know a little bit more about the advanced settings of this e-bike, let me know in the comments below. And here we are on the Engway L20 2.0 webpage. As you can see right now, it's listed for $7.99. That is an awesome deal. And currently it comes in the black color that I currently have right now that you guys are about to watch. You also get it in this sea green color and a rose pink color. Additional accessories you can buy from the website. So here on the website, it does say that the motor peaks at 1,125 watts. There's that rating for 75 Newton meters of torque. And over here, you can see some specifications about the size of the bike, the dimensions and all the different measurements. So what you can do is pause it at this point in the video and read off the numbers if you find that helpful. So guys, those are the specs and components of this Angway L20 2.0. Let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road and see how it performs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Angway L20 2.0. We're going to do our main hill climb test. Bring it all the way up to pedal assist five, if that makes a difference. And I did unlock the top speed on this bike, but I don't think that's going to do anything. Honestly, we're going to find out together if that does anything. All right, guys, without further ado, let's jump right in. Three, two, one, boom. Easy on the initial power. And then it does ramp up see how it does guys if I've earned your subscription please feel free to subscribe to the channel follow me on social media TikTok, Instagram Facebook like the video if you like it and if you don't tell me why in the comments tell me why you're mad look at this guys speedometer is more or less accurate I'm pretty happy with that is about one mile an hour off and we are going to finish off at about almost 20 miles an hour all right yeah see the throttle cuts me off at pretty much 20 it's holding me now there we'll try the uh the steep hill climb test guys we'll try it out why not so guys this bike it does have some features that the competition does not have number one we've got the 52 volt system we have the front rack, we've got the suspension seat post, which I do feel it working right now as I'm riding over my magnificently flat sidewalk in my town. Might as well be an off-road test. And I'll put up on the screen what this bike has compared to some of the competition. So you guys can make a good informed consumer decision on which bike you want to purchase. I do here. Those metal fenders rattling around a bit. Guys, I am not a fan of metal fenders. They're just noisy and plastic ones work just the same. Team plastic fenders. This is gonna be a shorter review ride because we're not gonna go all the way down to our usual top speed area because you guys know the top speed already. We know that this thing tops off throttle only at 20 miles an hour, even after I adjusted the speed limit. Still gonna keep you locked in at 20 miles an hour. But we're gonna try this steep hill climb test, bring it down to gear one just in case. Just in case we need it. Here we go. Eight miles an hour. Seven. You know what? I am genuinely impressed. It's doing it. It's actually doing it. Oh my God. This thing has some torque, guys, and I think it's advertised at 75 Newton meters of torque. That's impressive. These little budget e-bikes can never do that hill. I'm impressed. I'm genuinely impressed, and that's probably a result of that 52 volt system that's gonna give us that extra power. Wow, okay. Pedal assist. Feels like after, let's see. Yeah, we need like a full rotation and a half for the pedal assist to kick in. 
So it is what it is. And it does ease you, it does ease into the power gently. Like it starts gentle and then it ramps up, it gives you the torque. So initially, when you start pedaling or you hit the throttle, it doesn't give you all that much power, but then it does ramp up into that full 75 Newton meters of torque that you get. Yeah, starts you off easy. So it's not jarring, it's a nice easy start. And that is very good because uh, for some people, they don't want a ton of power, right? You're not gonna get a bike like this for power. You get it for the price and the value. But, listen guys, <laughs> we went up the steep hill climb throttle only at seven miles an hour. I've tried to do that with some other bikes from this company actually. 48 volt bikes, they couldn't do it. They could not do it. And this one did. The mechanical disc brakes, they work fine. It is what it is. It's a budget bike, guys. The grips do feel nice with the uh, rubberized levers, but they work just fine. And I guess a good plus of mechanical disc brakes is that there's no need to like bleed the brakes or anything like that. You just have to adjust them. As they wear out, you have to turn one Allen uh, bolt inside that kind of brings the pad closer together to make sure you still have stopping power. Yeah, we got some we got some power, guys. But see, it does stop you at 20 miles an hour. So if you're not interested in going fast at all, but you want the torque, this bike is a good option. If you live in a hilly area, this might not be a bad option. This might be probably your best option for the price point. Look at this. I'm pedaling only a little bit and we're crushing hills. Easy. I'm impressed. I think Engway got it right with this bike. At first you look at the specs and components, you're like, all right, yeah, mechanical brakes, budget stuff. But then you see they listen to you guys and they know you guys want power and they give it to you. So let's go ahead and pedal and see how fast we can get. Yeah, see that? 28 miles an hour. That's all you're gonna get. Brake test. Let's test the brakes from 20 miles an hour. Ready? Mm, they work, guys. And those brakes, they are not bedded in. Oh, a little winded. Yeah, see the throttle just cuts you off at 20. That's all I get. Seat comfort, it's all right. The suspension seat post, guys, it's kind of clunky, I'm not gonna lie. I would rather have a big comfy seat with no suspension in the seat post. Maybe some springs in the seat, that'd be nice. I'd rather have that than the suspension seat post. Plus, then you can get smaller riders on the bike. Just my opinion. Yeah, see, look at this. It starts you off easy. And then it really ramps up. Nice. Got a little bell. Get out of the way. Aggressive bell. All right, here's what we're gonna do. My favorite thing to do with these handlebar risers. Oh, a little too far. <laughs> Whoopsies. I guess that's the max right here. Let's push it a little bit further. Yeah. Now we're talking, guys. Yeah, slow power delivery, and then it really picks up. And you got that torque that is useful for crossing streets. See, the speedometer is mostly accurate, but it doesn't matter, guys. You guys know the top speed. I like how maneuverable this bike is. Oh, man. So maneuverable, agile. This bike is great if you live in a small apartment and you need to carry it around, bring it up the stairs, something like that. The display is nice and clean, minimalist. I see what I need to see. 
We're gonna ride around and use some battery. Maybe we'll get 10 miles, maybe more. We'll see uh, what the battery level is. We'll try and throw it on a voltmeter later. See how it goes. But right now we're about to come up to a hill and we'll see how the power is. Look at this. We're just going uphill, throttle only, easy. This little bike has a good amount of punch, guys. Man, I am very happy. One happy camper. Look at that, throttle only. The tires are fairly quiet, you know, they're three inch wide tires, so they have less surface area, which means less tire touching the road to make noise. But they're decently soft. This bike prioritizes being lightweight, nimble, and maneuverable. So they're not going to give you those giant four inch wide tires. These tires are perfect. They're plenty for a bike like this, especially because it's on the lighter side. And turning on this bike is a treat. It's such a joy. Ah, I feel like I'm driving a little go-kart. I can go anywhere. Just zip around in this thing. Some e-bikes that I reviewed, they're huge. They feel like huge SUVs. This thing is nimble and lightweight, quick. It's like a ninja. Look at this. Jump right in the sidewalk. And no one's going to give you any funny looks when you're riding this thing on the sidewalk because it's such a tiny little bike. It doesn't look like a motorcycle. So if your goal is to blend in with a bunch of other bicyclists on a pedestrian trail, a rail trail, somewhere where they allow e-bikes, this is your bike right here. And plus, this is locked into, what, class 2, class 3? I think this is locked into class 3. This will not go faster than 28 miles an hour. Unless I'm missing some kind of setting, you guys let me know in the comments if you figured out a way to unlock it and go faster than that. If it was unlocked, my guess is that it'd probably take you up to like 31 tops throttle only. So it's not too big of a deal. We're not missing out on that much power. All right, we're gonna cross the street again and go up another big hill. Here we go. Let's turn on our Savior heated gloves. Mmm, very nice. Link in the description. Zoom, 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 zoom. I feel like I'm a race car warming up the tires. Big bump. I feel that suspension seat post working again. It's a nice bonus to have. I guess it's better than nothing, but uh, it is what it is, guys. Look at this thing. Oh my God. Torque, little torque monster. This is a big, long hill. We're gonna push it, guys. We'll do this initial uh, 10 mile ride, see what the battery is at. We're getting up this no problem though. Wow, and if you pedal even a little bit, easy. I can go up this thing easy like 10 miles an hour. So I'm gently pedaling right now. And we're going 10 miles an hour. Very gently, 11. Let's see if I stop pedaling. Yeah, see I was barely putting any power in. But if you give it a little bit of more power, you'll be fine. This is a nice little bike. The more I ride this, the more I like it. Because of the design, let me show you guys. Because of the design of this bike, this step through, this very low step through design, I do feel my feet, especially my toes, kind of hitting the ground sometimes. So this is kind of low, at least for me. There's only like, maybe like, four inches from the ground to the bottom of the pedal. So just be careful if you're gonna be turning and you're pedaling, that gets pretty low. If your foot is aiming down, you might actually touch the ground a little bit, but it is very easy to get on and off this bike because of that step through design. So if you have any kind of mobility issues at all, the low step through design is phenomenal. Pedal, 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 pedal. Yeah, see, 28. That's all we're getting, folks. 
For the price, this bike is fantastic. Such an incredible price, folks. You can't beat it. Link in the description below. If there's any kind of discount codes down there, I'll put them down there as well. So you guys can save a little bit of money. Battery bars are showing three out of five. And that's uh, while riding around. That does recover a bit if you let it sit for a bit. All right, we're going downhill now. There's a good opportunity to bed the brakes. Go down to a crawl. And then we go faster again. And then once again, you brake down to a crawl. Not quite a stop. You accelerate again. And you just keep doing that a few times. Bed the brakes down. Yeah. I mean, the brakes work fine, guys. Mechanical disc brakes on a lightweight bike. Totally fine. Ghost pedaling. Definitely ghost pedaling after 25 miles an hour. So once again, if you're not planning on going fast, which you probably aren't if you're buying this bike, the front chain ring size is fine. You could always switch that out if you do want to pedal faster. Although remember, it's not gonna give you any more power past 28 miles an hour. Yeah, there's definitely a delay. Once you start pedaling, when the power kicks on, Pedal, 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 pedal. Yeah. We're flying, folks. Yeah, you're getting nothing after 20. That's a damn shame because this thing probably has more juice in it. More to give. Throttle on the hill climb. We got power, people. And this bike is lightweight and foldable. Some e-bikes out there, they're foldable, but they're gigantic and they're heavy. And this one is foldable and lightweight, which makes a lot more sense because you can fold it up and easily pick it up afterwards and store it in the closet, easy transport in a car, especially with the foldable pedals, foldable handlebar. If you need to store this in like a camper or an RV or anywhere, you can easily do that. And you can maneuver it around effortlessly. All right, let's see how it does on the horrible sidewalk that I have over here. This might as well be an off-road test. Yeah, that suspension seat post. I do feel it working. It works, but it's clunky, guys. The metal fenders, they're not rattling. I do hear rocks getting kicked up on them. So that's good at least. At least they are secured. If you need something to commute around in, this is a really good option. You got the front rack, you got the rear rack, you could store a bunch of stuff. Whatever you need, you could probably store it on this. All right, under load, we got down to two out of five battery bars. On my GPS, looks like we're at almost nine miles. We're gonna get this thing to 10 miles and then we'll put it on the voltmeter if we can, see where it's at. But that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you think of this bike in the comments below. Link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. If there's any kind of coupon codes or discounts, they will be in the description as well. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if I've earned your subscription, like the video, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. And if you don't like the video, tell me why in the comments. Tell me why you're mad. Tell me what your life problems are. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and my Facebook group, eBike Addicts. We have a lot of fun over there. It's a good place for your fellow electric bike addicts to hang out and talk about our electric bike addiction. Looks like we'll pretty much get to 10 miles today. That's it for today, folks. Until next time.